Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Amori. Who's ready for some side content? Oh, boy, who am I? We finally have the full real-world party, too. It's... Uh, <laughs> so, I saw, I know that we broke into Aubrey's room uh, and, you know, talked about the photos. Why did she agree to come with us? Um, hero convinced her. Hero convinced yeah. her, okay. Being, being the older and more mature one, he's kind of the mediator for everyone. Like... Uh, pushing Basil into the river, well, in the lake in a huff was kind of like the tipping point. Not, pun not intended. Uh, but, like, Hero being here and, like, the rest of the squad being here was enough. Yeah. Uh, to convince us, like, hey, maybe, maybe I was being a shit. But, uh, unfortunately, we're trying to p uh, pay B uh, Basil a visit. Uh, and things are not looking good because Basil is currently in the hospital because their grandma is really ill. And I think it's just straight up implied or inferred that she passes away. Yes. So things are going to get pretty tense very soon. So. I want to go back to Aubrey pushing Basil into the lake because uh, I mentioned this at the time and uh, Ted landed on something uh, pretty close to the truth while being wildly wrong. <laughs> but there, it, <laughs> there is a connection between the lake incident and what happened to Mari. Um, more of a thematic conne connection, uh, yeah. to be honest. It's actually kind of important that the story shows someone losing their shit like that and almost causing someone to die. But, like... How do I put this without spoiling? We're almost there. If it like helps, maybe we it, it'd be better off if we just Whoa, wait beat part. Oh, oh, wait, no, she's painting. I thought she was playing Beat Saber. <laughs> 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 mm, that was the painter girl who we kept having to just smile and nod to when she was asking us about her work. And then her, uh, her uh, fucking. A uh, headspace counterpart is that artist that lives inside Sweetheart's Castle that you have to pay an exuberant amount of clams for just to finish the commissions for. Oh, I I, I know I mentioned I mentioned before, but to say it again, like it is very much worth uh, grinding the clams for that though because the paintings are really good. Wait, what did this guy forget to bring? Me. <sighs> so what did he just pack a bunch of bread? <laughs> There's a pie, and there's cookies, and... Does Kel have a little sister? Yes, he does. Aw. Uh, Kel and Hero. That's actually surprising, given that if Hero's in college, that means that that, um, that the, the girls, like, the parents probably had to have had her when they were, like, in their 40s, which is interesting. It was not un, not it's terribly not unheard, unheard of. of. Yeah, like my parents had my brothers when my mom was, I think, like nearing forty. I think when my brother was, yeah, my, when my another when my second brother was born, I would say. So it's definitely not unheard of. It's just unusual, uh, for sure. Yeah, a friend of mine, like, like he was conceived when the parents were in their, both in their mid forties. Ooh, wow, yeah. Did you know that if you're like 33, that's considered a geriatric pre pregnancy, uh, which sounds like a good way to offend so. a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's like, oh man, Brain Scratch Comms is a geriatric YouTube channel. Excuse, excuse I me. I mean, technically, I mean, I don't know what's geriatric, but it's like we do turn 15 this year. What's with the ethereal CD? We got it for collecting enough trash. Yeah, but what is it? There, so uh, there are CDs that you can collect in the real life segments that you can place in the jukebox in the pizza shop, uh, and it just it just changes the background music. Oh, uh, okay. you can buy a good handful of them in the hobby shop in the front, and a lot of them were uh, a lot of them are remixes of uh, previous tunes in the game. A lot of them have guest uh, artists too. There's a I think there's a, I'm not sure if there's one or two tracks from Toby Fox. I know there's uh, in this one. one. Yeah, uh, and they're pretty good. They're 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 a neat listen. Mm. 
Toby but you Fox. need uh, you, you need to, uh, they do cost like I think ten bucks like per CD. So you're not getting all of them unless you do all the uh, side missions and side jobs. I like how this store is called Other Mart. By the way, it's like you know. I'm trying to decide whether it's a Metroid reference or not. I kind of just fuck with the idea that the sweetheart character is based off of this girl and their store specifically. And the store clerk is such a jerk. <laughs> Have you ever like had a job where like the owner had such a fist up their ass about meeting like company standards or having proper etiquette? Dude. You have no idea. Uh, Probably not. My experience with management and other people at, at workplaces has been kind of the opposite, where they're always just looking to cut corners because they'd rather do big numbers and deal with the fallout of the uh, in individual mistakes. Yeah, it depends on the kind of person that you have. You know, it's there's definitely the people who end up with management who very clearly, like, want to get out. So they they want to have like they want to run the tightest shit possible, tightest ship possible. I should say, not I guess they their shit can be as tight as they want it to be. Yeah, well <laughs> because they have um, a, they have an incredibly tight ass. Yeah. Um. So they 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 want to run they want to run a really tight ship so that you know the 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 mysterious you know upper corporate whatever the fuck will notice them senpai and then they can not work retail anymore which okay you know what granted i understand for sure um but then you also have managers who are like normal people and they, they just like you know want to get through the day um thankfully i've had more of the latter than the former which i appreciate i think out of every group activity i ever did with a bunch of friends group reading is something i've never done ever in my life by group reading, do you mean like a book club where either you or read, like like you read either, everyone or? reading the same book or everyone reading from the same book? Like are like one book shared between four people in this case. Never done that in my life. That's the cool S. <laughs> uh, I'm very confused at the moment. Um but like uh, okay, I, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Do you mean like four people sitting in a room all reading at the same time? So like we just had a bit right there earlier uh, in this very part where Sonny was reading a comic with the rest of the group beside him reading along with him. Which is essentially that that's that's group reading from the same book. I've never done that ever in my life. I mean, I do that with my niece and nephew who are two and three years old. Um, but like all, everybody reading from the same group, like from the same book is just, it, it's awful because most books are not built for more than one person to be reading. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, you, you're not, you're reading at a, a skewed angle for one thing. And also you're not dead center in front of that shit. Yeah. And like everybody reads at a different pace too. So it's like, no, no, thanks. Everybody get their own copy. All right. Can you please turn the page? It's only been a second. Can you please turn the page? You turn the page, you wash your hands. Yeah, it's a comic after all. That's just what I that's just what I've always wanted, you know, to read a book in multiplayer where the other players already been through all the chapters, <laughs> so they're Are just rushing on ahead. They won't clash. I want to explore. <laughs> but the other player keeps running ahead. I don't uh, right. Oh yeah, I forgot this pet rock just has tofu. a one winged. Yeah, just has one wing. <laughs> I can't really hear the music, but is this like some fake Latin Tamagotchi? Bullshit? It's one winged angel. I don't appreciate the rebirth spoilers, by the way. Oh, you edited it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I thought that that was that would be some music shit. For it's like here's just one winged angel for no fucking reason. No, just <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> like, this, yeah, this yeah. is a really hard thing to win considering. Um, Odds wise, she is literally one third chance for every option. So you yeah, just you're have playing. To guess. You're genuinely playing rubber scissors with this character. So except they have three times the health you do. Yeah. Good luck. So you have to win a effectively 50-50 shot nine times before she wins three. Oh god. If I was still in high school, I could probably do that probability. Um, because I used to be good at math. 
Uh, I am no longer good at math. Oh, God. Uh, Actually, you know what? I just remembered the worst thing about doing the side job for that character specifically. So if you take her side job, uh, you have to SWAT. I think I'm not sure if we showed it in the earlier in the commentary, but you have to SWAT flies in the store. Do not wear headphones during that. <laughs> I got the because little... the flies buzzing is in stereo. So that shit travels from your left ear to your right ear. Oh, dude. Making you think that there is an actual insect in your headphones. Dude, that's like, that's some devious shit. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hated it. And you got to play that game three times. <laughs> One for each day. Oh, man. Kel, the Kel, fuck are you doing? Don't do it. <laughs> 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 you know he was suffering that uh, yeah so uh, what i think what it was is like the, the the drinks are long expired in that vending machine but he loves orange joe orange a lot joe is the orange joe specifically which to reiterate is just a orange drink a highly caffeinated orange drink sort of hybrid yeah it's like uh do you guys remember tang i uh, yeah oh, God. i do actually yeah, I remember the planet turning into Tang once. That was a trip. Yeah. It was uh, very depressing. <laughs> uh, I like that it's still very clear that Aubrey hates everybody that she's with currently do you get still. The crossroads thing? I don't remember if you did. I'm not sure if you do, or if that may be like a random sort of fun event. But uh so I was talking earlier about how we we attempt to visit Basil. Uh, and he is currently not here because he's at the hospital from his grandma. And I said, like, it's pretty much implied or inferred that the grandma doesn't make it, passes away. And the thing that convinced me that, of that was that, and I'm not sure if it's like one of those random events that may or may not happen. Uh, Basil's grandma will sometimes randomly spawn in the middle of the road. What? Specifically at the crossroads. Why? <laughs> Uh, I'm assuming, well, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's most definitely a spirit oh. because if you attempt to get close, it fades away. Oh, interesting. Is there a reason why the, the dream world backgrounds here at the moment? Not sure. Exactly. What do you mean? Like the, the border, the, the border is for the dream world. Well, the border is just something that the console versions of the game have. Yeah. But it, it has, it does, it has been changing for whatever to match whatever's been going on. So, and we only previously saw this border when you were playing in the dream world. But when we went into this guy's house, um, it changed to this. I hmm. don't know if that's like a glitch, if it's not supposed to be that. Oh, I, I wouldn't know. I like how Aubrey is the one who finally fixes this idiot's stupid pipe. Because she obviously has experience with this kind of situation. She's the only one that qualifies in going into the Aubrey-shaped hole. No, I'm kidding. Actually, I think the hole is in the shape of the dude. The hole was built for him. Yeah, <laughs> it, he built it. He ran through the wall in a rage. <laughs> uh, th we, that was last session, I think. Yeah, like we go outside and now we have the real. The real Maybe it always happens when you go inside a house. Maybe it's just the decal for a house. Hmm, we will see. Um, is there a specific thing you need to do to trigger the story to continue, or do you just have to do enough side, side quests? Uh, you can start the story stuff whenever. What? You can go right to the, uh, oh, you're talking about this. Oh, no, <laughs> but it's not. It's, it's specifically that house. Huh. Hmm, interesting. Like, I, I, I generally don't know. Like, I'm not sure if there was, like, if that's intentional or if it's maybe something that they missed. Oh man, she's giving us her, her rare Yu-Gi-Oh card. Can I can I get a black luster soldier? It is actually a blue eyes white dragon, actually. So I haven't looked into any other uh, additional details, but uh, there are only, only four, four of the four. Oh, it's, 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 it's a blue eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a blue and eyes. And you reference. can get rid of it. You can you can rip it in half. Oh man. You freaking, you freaking dick. Now there are only three. You know what bugs me about there being f only four blue eyes white dragons in the world? The the upper limit of cards, you, of copies of a single card you can have in your deck is three. Yeah. So th there is no reason for that fourth card to exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would assume 
I, I would assume three were made for the sake of having three in a deck, and then one for, I, I want to laminate it and grade it. <laughs> but uh, in secret, there was a fourth uh, card forged in the fires of Mount Yugi. <laughs> Oh, uh, God, this place. The fourth card only exists so that Kaiba can both be an asshole and rip the last one and a half and have a full set of three. Yeah. So this is a place that only shows up on this day. Uh, and this is kind of like the payoff for the Recycultists, I think that's what they're called. Yep. Uh, being they a thing gonna, here. They so, were going to dump all this trash in your play place? No, they're the, they, they finally amassed enough trash to recycle to build a fortress. And what we have here is essentially the the only like real life dungeon in the game. Interesting. Okay. Um, but this is also completely optional. Also, if you lose here, you are forcibly ejected out of this building and it disappears. Huh. So this is so this is the only set of real world battles where you actually have to win to uh, get something done. To at know. least see the end of this place. Because, again, you don't game over in real world. Like, at all. So if you, for whatever reason, lose all of your party members here, you are forcibly ejected out of this place, and the dungeon vanishes off the face of the I, I, I like how these are essentially Pokemon battles. Um, where you walk in front of a guy, and they say, Oh, we made eye contact through this recycling can on my head. We have to fight now. Uh, I do like the name Recycultist. Uh, that's yeah, that's a great name. Need to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Does everybody share the same stats that they did in the Dream World? Nope. Just by virtue of there not being any real stat uh, afflictions in the real world. Everyone is straight up level one. And there's no XP, so you stay level one the whole time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, not, not the most not the most in-depth battles. You're just doing this for the Hyux and like <laughs> to get more flavor text. Is there like a reward for being able to get through through all the fights? Through all this? I don't know, because I ate shit at the very end. <laughs> I think I ate shit at the end too. Yeah. Because the final boss of this dungeon is actually pretty hard. I like how, like, in the dream world, we're obviously seeing Aubrey at her most young and innocent, but in the real world, her victory pose, her, her victory expression is just vicious. Like, oh yeah, since we're now in the real world, all the tag photos are updated to reflect that, and the Aubrey ones are fantastic. Yeah, because she like she's. She's back with the squad, but, you know, it's also like she's got personal space. That sort of thing. Still kind of embarrassed. I think the best is when Aubrey <laughs> tags Kel. Uh, that's like, Aubrey yeah. tagging like Sonny, oh, but Aubrey Sunny. tagging Kel like she just fucking decks him. She's just like, we're doing this again. It's been 10 years. Yo, uh, it's I, the, I've the, grown the past this. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like there it is right there. The Batman back fist. <laughs> oh, well, did you have you to know. plan this out to have minimum repeat? <laughs> repeat. It's like, uh, it's like a puzzle, but nope, I, yeah. that's a repeat there. I think I get the Yeah, I, th I think Ryan's just showing off the tag photos. If, if you were yeah. going to repeat the Kel gets punched in the face one, I'd say it's deserved. <laughs> yeah, there's two hands. <laughs> Dude, this is a Pokemon dungeon with people just standing there staring at the wall until somebody walks past them. I I just I'm just appreciating the fact that they made a dungeon mix off of that 10 second recycling theme that plays whenever you recycle something in, in Headspace. <laughs> so wait, so if there's a does that mean that like these people have been around for forever and that if a Amori if the in the Amori world <laughs> like dreaming about these weirdos? That last one says, I don't actually believe in this stuff. My girlfriend dragged me along. <laughs> uh. Well, you know, people talk about trash waifus, but uh, that's a little ridiculous. <laughs> that's just rude. So 
you turn into toast if you die in the dream world. What happens if you die in the real world? Do you die in real life? You just get you knocked just black out. out it. Yeah. Maybe you leave the, maybe you leave the area. <laughs> if you die in the real world, you die in real life. It's like sort of online without the what online the fuck? part. <laughs> People die when uh, they are killed. Thank you, Shiro. Okay, so... I was like the only like somewhat annoying thing about this locale is that towards the end of this place, you're going to find like the head honcho and you can only get the idea of confronting him if you like recruit more recite cultists, which you're not told until when you get there. You can recruit so, more of these guys. Well, specifically for that one bit. So like you're going through this like any other dungeon and there's a part of you that wants to fight the recyclist, despite it being the same battle over and over again. But there's also a few where it's like, oh, they're not in my way, so I'm not going to talk to them. And then you get to the very end saying that if you're going to fight me, you're going to need to convince a, a lot of recyclists to join your cause. So like, oh, fuck, now I have to go back and talk to the ones I skipped, uh, which means more <laughs> battles that I didn't initiate. Yep. And you need to, like, and by then you've probably forgotten which ones you haven't battled. So you got to talk to all of them. It's a pain in the butt. It's like going through a Shatter the Hedgehog level to find the last few soldiers you haven't killed yet. Ugh. You know, I do have to say they did nail the, like, the catholic -y, you know, in his name, uh, Let Us Pray. Um, dialogue here, gotta say. It's a little too on the nose, actually. It's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so does the emotion system actually even exist in the real world, or what? No, because there's nothing you can do uh, to uh, change the status of it. Ah, I see. So it's pure um. There are exceptions to this, but that's plot-related. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, yeah, because it does seem like these fights are pretty. Standard. Yeah, see, at this point, there's, the jokes run its course. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, <laughs> there's only so much you can do to keep uh, the interest going when all you can do is really attack. Yeah, this does seem very like Viridian Forest mashing tackle until you beat all the bug uh, hitters, kind of. I was thinking that I felt like I, I, I felt I, I'm starting to feel like I do when I'm halfway through the Gary Vault in Fallout 3. Hmm. <laughs> There's a, there's a vault full of clones of a guy named Gary, and they all just yell their name at you as they run at you trying to kill them. There is a story behind the vault, but it's like, you know. Come on, let me pass. So you got to go and fight more. Re no, I got to recruit them with a hero. Oh, well, okay. Even if you are quite charming. <laughs> oh, not only do you have to fight them all, you have to, like, go and talk to them with Gary. Uh, Gary? Well, he does Hero. <laughs> he does have that Gary okay. Uh, hero from Hero's Vault, yes. Um, what is... So when is Kel ever put in front? Because I know that... Um, Kel throws Seth things at targets. Oh, he throws things, okay. He cannot you leave due to a mysterious force. Ooh. Oh, you know, they probably do that because the flag to make this building disappear is just when you leave. You leave, yeah. Yeah, okay. so once you're here, you 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 have to commit until you either finish it or you, someone finishes you. Wait, why did well, he turn into a bird? <laughs> you're coming with me. Okay. Why did he turn into a bird? I don't remember what the bird's in reference to. I do like the idea that your RPG uh, party gets to be like this fucking long. Like, that is pretty funny. Yeah, we're like reaching saga levels of ridiculousness. Well, it looks like we have no choice but to surrender. <laughs> okay, bye. Converted recyclist. <laughs> okay. All right. So oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, okay. that Some was very a thing. strange parts to end. 